Hey guys, uh, RJ here. Sorry it's been so long since I've made a video. Um, I've been feeling extra lousy lately, um, as I've explained. I'm gonna try to talk a lot less about my health today. Um, you'll hear enough about that. It's, it being my reality makes it hard not to, but, um, we'll see. Uh, hopefully I'm not so shaky this, this time. My hands were a little shaky last time. Um, I want to talk about ink heart. <laughs> I know that's a little random, but it was originally, um, a book, um, or a trilogy of books, but the first book, Ink Heart, by Cornelia Funky. And, if I'm saying that right, <laughs> and there was, the first time I ever heard about Ink, ink Heart was um, when <laughs> I went to see the premiere for um, the, 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 on the opening day of Prince Caspian, the second Narnia movie. I saw in the lobby there was a um, giant, like, um, one of those big stand, like, four-sided cardboard cutout, like, advertisements for this thing called Ink Heart. I'd never heard of it. I hadn't read the book yet. I'd never heard of it, actually. I mean, if I'd seen it somewhere, it didn't mean anything. I'd never seen it, heard of it. And I, um, I saw this cutout, and I saw, like, on it, I saw Brendan Fraser's name, um, I saw, um, uh, Andy Circus, Helen Mirren, like, I was like, oh, and, and the poster was really intriguing. I was like, oh, that looks good. That looks really good. And then we went and saw Prince Caspian, you know, and I was totally into that. Big Narnia fan. Um, but I was, um, really intrigued and it kind of stuck in my head and I, you know, um, we, di we didn't get the internet in my house until later in on that year. So I couldn't just go home and look it up or anything. But I, so I kind of forgot about it. And then we were at a friend's house, probably December or, yeah, it would have been probably November or December. There, there was a, a football game on TV. Patriots were playing, the Patriots were playing. Um, <laughs> good old New England Patriots team. Um, and I was sitting, they had like a, all the food out and they were having kind of like a, hey, watch the Patriots party at their house. And I was in a separate room. They had a small TV playing for anyone who didn't want to watch the game. There was just a TV playing random stuff. And an ad for Ink Heart came on. This would have been like December of 2008 or January, probably December of 2008, somewhere in there, November, December. And I saw it was a TV spot for Ink Heart. And I was like, oh, yeah that's a movie that looks really good and the girl I was sitting with um it was she was the daughter of the of the family that was hosting the party she um she she was we chatted about it a little bit and about a week later the family said to my family they said hey we have tickets we have the ability to get tickets to this movie um to, to that movie ink heart I heard that you know that, that Rachel was into it that um that she wanted to see it um <laughs> right, sorry, I said Rachel. Rachel being my um, my full name. RJ is, stands for Rachel Joy. It's my full name. Um, RJ is my nickname. Everyone knows me by RJ now at this point. I think only my boss calls me Rachel anymore. Well, not really, but RJ's been been my nickname for so long. Um, anyways, so we they it was going to be the, the night before the actual release date of Ink Heart. Um, we were going to get to see it at it was a Chunkies is a. Um, a cinema where you get to eat food and watch the movie. And I remember I was so excited. And the week before we got to go to it, because it was January, I believe, 22nd, if I have that right. I should I should have looked this up. But I think it was January 22nd, I think, was the official release date, in the American release date of Inkart. And um, the... The... Um, the night before, so it would have been the 21st, I believe, 21st, something like that, we went to Chunky's and we got to, and we was like really quiet in there and there was only, only a few people. I don't know how they, I don't remember how they got the tickets. It was like they had like a special, like they knew somebody and somebody said, hey, we have a pre-showing or I don't know what it was. It was kind of fun. So it was really quiet in there and we, my, my dad got some fries and we were like, like we had some snack foods around in the cinema because it's a cinema where you eat and, um, and watch the movie. And I will never forget sitting there in the theater and the big screen, we were really, we had a really nice seat. And I was sitting there and I was just, I'd been having a really 
bad year that year. I mean, the, the prior summer, I'd lost someone very close. Well, actually, a few people close to me, but one particular um, person in my life that I still have not gotten over to this day, and I don't think I ever will. <laughs> and I was in a dark place, and I will never forget sitting there and watching that movie. And it, it, it's kind of, it's a wild story, and it's basically this, this guy who, when he reads out loud the um the the characters come out of the book um so if he reads out loud from a story something or someone usually someone but objects sometimes come out of the story and i mean there's more to it than that but that's kind of the base the premise the start of the story and uh brendan fraser uh plays mo the main character and it's interesting because the author of the book cornelia funky she um when she wrote the character, she actually wrote it with Brendan Fraser in mind. She'd seen him in The Mummy, and I believe it was The Mummy. And she <laughs> she wrote it with him in mind, so she'd actually mailed him a copy of the book. Um, he, he actually, there's an interview um, of him talking about this, but she'd mailed him a copy of the book and had, sorry if my hands are shaking, um, and had told him, hey, I wrote this character inspired by you. And when it came for them to make the film. It was New Line Cinema uh, made the movie. And they basically, it was basically like, he said, hey, I'm not beholden to this. If, if you want to cast someone else, I'm not going to worry about it. But it sounds like the author really wanted it. And so they really sought him first. Like they didn't really, um, they didn't really um, <laughs> look at anyone else first. Like if he had said no, or if it hadn't been able to happen, they would have done so. But they basically were like, this is for you. Um, but it is, it's one of my favorite movies. I've, I've watched it countless times. Um, I know there's a lot of hatred on the internet for it. I really don't care. I'm, I, I have discovered that I am the lover of unloved cinema, I've realized, because all of my favorite movies, most of my favorite movies, are either kind of loved or never loved, and I, all of my favorite movies are like the underdog movies. <laughs> like, I mean, Narnia has some love, but there's still that negativity, and I despise it. But that's a whole other... Uh, Narnia will be another... I'll talk about it another time. But I don't know. I just had Ink Heart on my brain. Um, and I kind of wanted to just discuss it, because it is such a good movie. Andy Serkis plays the bad guy, and or one of the bad guys. And he's amazing. One of his... I think it's his most underrated performance, but one of his best. Right next to Gollum. I would say Gollum, and then... Capricorn, his character in this. He he plays, like, it's like a bad guy. Like, he came off the page of a fiction novel because Mo read, Brendan Fraser's character read from the book and he came out of the book. So he suddenly, he, he thinks he's being all cool and, you know, um, he's figured out how to, he thinks he's going to conquer our world, right? Because he thinks it's smaller, like his world. And yet it's, you know, he's just in this little, little corner of Italy. It's really funny in a way. But he's dark. He's still a dark, kind of a scary character. But it's amusing that he thinks he can take over the world. But um, anyways, so the the film is brilliant. But when I, I, after I'd seen the movie, I went and sought out the books. And um, I actually, it's funny, the back of the book says, dare to read it out loud. And so I was like, you're on. And I actually, one summer, I believe it actually was that summer, 2009, or maybe it was 2010. No, it probably was 2009. You know, it had to have been 2009, because 2010 was a trash fire of my, my, that was my, the early days of my vertigo, and I know for a fact it wouldn't have been then. So it was like some, sometime mid-2009. Uh, I think it was the second time I read the book. I read the whole thing out loud in chunks, like I kept sitting outside on the back porch and <laughs> reading the book out loud. So I'd read a whole chapter. Sometimes I swear there were little birds that were coming and la landing and and, <laughs> and and listening to me. But um, so I re read the whole book out loud. But then I read the second one. And at the time, I remember I, I both loved and hated it for some reason. I don't know how else to say that. It was kind of a weird, like, it creeped the crap out of me. But I was in such a dark place that it was oddly comforting. And to this day, I still get that feeling from it. And so I kind of love it for that. And the third book is the size of a dictionary. Literally, I put it next to a dictionary. I'm like, this is the same size. This is weird. And that one really creeped me out more than the second. And it was like I was reading that. My grandmother was in the hospital at the time and she had some problems. And I was I had this huge novel. The, the title of it is called Ink Death is the third book. And the, I always, I kind of wish I had a picture of what I looked like sitting there 
in the hospital cafeteria, taking a break from seeing her, and cradling this giant thick book with a skull on the front that said Ink Death. And knowing emotionally what I was going through at the time, I must have looked like, I wasn't even, I know I was wearing a lot of black then, and it wasn't because I was trying to be emo, but the mental image of just thinking about what I must have looked like, because I was in a dark place, and there's no way I wasn't like, looking more disturbed than I probably felt. It was cathartic. I find catharsis in strange places, um, usually in more uplifting things, but yeah. So anyways, I don't know why I'm talking about that entirely. I just kind of wanted to talk about Incarton. Please watch the movie. It is amazing. Don't listen to the haters. At least try it. At least try it. It is, it's really well done, underrated. Paul Bettany um, plays um, Dustfinger, which is one of the best characters. I highly recommend it. Um, Paul Bettany, Helen Mirren, uh, Liza Bennett plays um, Maggie, the, ma the one of the main characters, and then Brenda Fraser. There's the cast list is amazing in it. Um, uh, Jim Broadbent plays um, Finolio, the author of the book Inkheart, where the, that the characters come out of. Um, he's amazing in that. It, it it makes me giggle when I watch him in that. But <laughs> so, anyways. Um, yeah, um, if you have any questions about Inkheart, let me know. If there's uh, topics you want me to talk about, um, let me know down below in the comments or message me on, on the uh, Liberty Hoffman Studios uh, page, Facebook page, YouTube, anywhere. Um, I am going to get to, I know I, I have listened to all of you, the topics you've asked me to talk about, I will talk about them. Um, this one just, I just felt like I could say this off the cuff because my brain's a little, uh, my, my migraines were really bad last night. So I just, I really wanted to make a new uh, video. Sorry if the video's a little bad, uh, but I didn't um, want to do something that I had to think about too hard. I almost did Narnia, but I'll, I'll say that ne maybe next time. Next time will be Narnia. You watch. <laughs> um, hey, uh, it was really uh, nice to chat. Um, We'll talk about something else uh, next time. Uh, maybe Narnia, maybe um, I know someone asked for me to talk about Switchfoot, which we'll see how that goes. Um, I have my ups and downs with Switchfoot, so I don't know what I'd say. Probably positive things, because the negative ones no one wants to hear, but uh, <laughs> um, unless someone wants to hear why I almost stopped listening to Switchfoot entirely, because I really did almost stop listening to Switchfoot entirely once, and their song that they wrote for Narnia, um, This Is Home, actually saved that. So that, I, maybe I should talk about that next time. Uh, more on that next time. And yeah, maybe, um, I know I, ta I, ta I said about the, the time I got caught driving my bike on the highway. I should tell that story sometime once I've gathered my thoughts. That was, uh, that was during a, a time in my life. I was, that was 2008-ish. I was going through hell then. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, anyways, um, hopefully I haven't bored you to death. Um, watch Inkheart. It's amazing. Brendan Fraser is amazing in that. And I'm not saying that just because he's gotten a comeback. I can't believe he ever had to have a comeback. He should never have been thrown off like that. But that's a whole other story. So Inkheart is awesome. And I'm actually fixing to reread the trilogy. It's been a long time. Um, I started kind of reading a little bit of it. And it's like, uh, cathartic again. So um, good to see everybody. Uh, hopefully uh, it won't be too long till another video. See you later. Bye.